greetings to one and all. C3S is pleased to bring to you a brand new series titled C3S Strategic Insights, India's Island Diplomacy. This series is aimed at increasing a maritime consciousness amongst our listeners as we look at the islands in the Indian Ocean region and break down its geographical importance and strategic relevance while also considering its relations with India and the China factor. This is Padmashri Anandan, Research Officer at the Chennai Centre for China Studies and I welcome you to the first episode in this series. We will focus on the islands of Mauritius and Aglaga. To speak to us on this subject, I am privileged to introduce to you Mr. Tanvir Jaikishan. Mr. Tanvir Jaikishan currently works as Chief Operations Officer in Red Kangaroo Health Private Limited in Mauritius. Mr. Tanvir holds a master's degree in international health policy from the London School of Economics. His passions are the study of geopolitics and the classical antiquities. He is a regular contributor to and a member of the Chennai Centre for China Studies. He is also a member of the International Institute of Strategic Studies in London. It is our privilege to have Mr. Tanvi speak to us and without any delay, let's get right into the episode. Good morning everybody. Uh, I'm happy and grateful to be able to speak to you today on India's island diplomacy in the Indian Ocean region and the Sagar Initiative. To those who don't know what SAGA stands for, it stands for security and growth for all in the region. It is India's maritime uh, security uh, as well as a maritime outreach program launched by the uh, Narendra Modi government. And in this episode, we will be looking at um, India's relationship with Mauritius and Aglega. Now, before we go into the relationship, uh, just to let you know, I live in Mauritius. I'm speaking to you from Mauritius. And from a COVID standpoint, uh, we are in a partial lockdown. Uh, we are seeing maybe three or four new cases every day. And um, beaches, gyms, restaurants, theatres, nightclubs, discotheques, uh, weddings, uh, banquet halls, parties remain shut. But you can go to work and you can go to the malls and you can go to a restaurant and take away food but not dine in at a restaurant. So we're in a sort of partial lockdown uh, currently. And... Um, uh, I understand that India is still reeling from a devastating second wave and my thoughts and prayers are with those who have lost um, loved ones and to those who have loved ones still uh, suffering from the disease. Now, with that in mind, let's let's dive in and uh, let's look at India's relationship with Mauritius uh, as a country. India and Mauritius uh, have a very close uh, relationship economically, politically, socio-culturally. And uh, this relationship has been nurtured over several decades. Mauritius, India is a very important uh, partner, a trading partner um, for Mauritius. And there's a lot that India has been doing over the last several years uh, to help Mauritius become the developed and advanced economy that it is today. In terms of infrastructure, India is helping Mauritius build the, its metro through uh, Larsen and Tubro. Uh, India has helped construct a new Supreme Court building. India has contributed generously uh, through grants and lines of credit in uh, building roads and highways and other infrastructure here in Mauritius. India has also helped finance the construction of the ENT hospital, which is now Mauritius's dedicated COVID-19 hospital. So if you have COVID-19, God forbid, there is no home isolation allowed in Mauritius. There is no treatment in private clinics allowed. So patients are automatically taken in put in the ENT hospital, irrespective of how serious or mild their symptoms are. So this hospital, again, was constructed with uh, Indian help. And India is also helping Mauritius construct a, a state-of-the-art uh, cancer hospital uh, with HCGS consultants. India was also one of the first providers of help and aid, uh, not aid, I would say, but uh, grants to, uh, when Mauritius built uh, Cyber City, or where my office is uh, currently and where I'm speaking to you from today. In fact, the first building built in Cyber City, uh, Cyber City 1, was renamed Atal Bihari Vajpayee Building after the former Prime Minister passed away. So there's a lot that India has done in terms of helping Mauritius develop its infrastructure through lines of credit and, and grants and so on and so forth. Uh, 
very recently uh, this year uh, right before the covid outbreak the second covid outbreak here in mauritius uh, a high level delegation from india headed by the external affairs minister uh, mr jay shankar visited mauritius and uh, he inaugurated the new indian high commission building new chancery building which is right next to the office which is about a minute away less than a minute away actually a massive massive uh, building which is rem which reminds me of roosevelt house in in delhi actually and what he also did was he announced a 100 million dollar line of credit uh, for defense in mauritius that will allow the island to um put to 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 lease out a dornier aircraft and a helicopter for anti piracy missions drug trafficking etc uh, india has also in the past handed over one uh, coastal patrol vessel to mauritius which i have actually seen in port louis it's not really been taken out to my knowledge but uh, india controls to provide uh, security to uh, uh, to mauritius and acts as a net guarantor of security especially uh, when it comes to patrolling mauritius's waters against piracy and drug trafficking and so on and so forth and there's a lot that india has done and continues to do under the sagar initiative we all recollect the mv vakasho incident um uh, that took place last year with the oil spill it was in, it was the indian navy that actually came in and helped control the oil spill it was the c17 globe masters of the indian air force that actually dropped in a lot of supplies that were used to clean up the oil so the indian navy and the indian air force actually played a huge role in in helping uh, contain the oil spill along with other um, uh, nations and this was part of uh, the uh, the sagar initiative of of reaching and helping uh indian ocean region countries in times of need and in, in times of distress perhaps i think the most important uh, or one of the most important aspects of the work the relationship is that um, india and mauritius signed a and i've got my notes here so i don't make a, don't make a mistake a free trade agreement in uh, february of this year the comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreement which came into effect on the 1st of april this year and again many say that this was in response to china signing an fta with mauritius but again this uh, nego this deal was in negotiation for some time now between the two countries this deal by and large will favor mauritius more than india because what's very clear is that the mauritius manufacturing community understands that they don't have the scale to compete with india they don't have the ability to produce at scale they don't have the ability to compete uh, in terms of price they don't have the ability to compete in terms of uh, labor costs um, when it comes to indian manufacturing but there are still benefits both in terms of export imports and services uh, from a uh, export from a from a product point of view um, Uh, this will benefit about 310 items ex, uh, ex, items exported from india to mauritius which includes items in food and beverage agricultural products um, textiles base metals woods electric uh, electronic items and chemicals and um, for mauritius about 615 items manufactured here will enjoy um, uh, what do you say ac uh, beneficial access to indian markets which includes uh, frozen fish specialty sugar rum beer soaps bags fresh uh, fruits juices etc etc uh, from a services sector point of view uh, the indians and i think this is the more important aspect of the uh, of the agreement indian service providers will have access to about uh, 115 sub sectors in mauritius like professional services computer related services research and development telecommunications construction education uh, environment financial tourism and yoga and uh, in return india has offered access to about 95 sub sectors in about 11 broad service areas in india but again uh, this is a uh, very much a one sided deal with uh, mauritius benefiting more from this deal than india but this deal was not really signed into effect to sort of um, look at trade evenly but was to sort of um, help mauritius develop and continue to develop its economy and more importantly uh, establish a firm foothold in mauritius uh, uh, geopolitically and geostrategically medical tourism is also a big pull um, uh, in in uh, you know in terms of ties between india and mauritius uh, mauritius does not have the capacity to treat uh, very complicated illnesses and in fact the government of mauritius often uh, sends patients to india for treatment and a lot of uh, private insurance policies including my insurance policy allows me to actually go to india take treatment and come back and these insurance policies pays for my air ticket the air ticket of a one companion 
plus the treatment and the return to India because they find that even with all of these costs, the treatment is still cheaper in India than in Mauritius. And uh, the outcomes are, are 2x better because, again, the technology is better, the doctors are more experienced, and the price is cheaper. So, obviously, medical tourism is a huge pull. And uh, even during the lockdowns, even though the borders are closed, Mauritius patients are still flying to India. They're still flying to India on special repatriation flights. Uh, they're getting treated in, in, in Chennai and Bangalore and Bombay and Delhi and are now flying back and spending time in quarantine. Um, in fact, in a time where, where the airplanes flew and Air Mauritius was still flying, um, the Chennai-Bangalore flight, which is the flight I used to take to come home, was called the, the, the patient flight or the medical flight. It was the only flight where you couldn't book your seats in advance because patients were given first preference as to which seats. And I could say from my experience, and I used to fly back and forth three, four times a year, that each flight to Mauritius would carry about 20, 25 patients and each flight to India would carry... Uh, uh, another 20 25 patients so you have about 50 patients going or 50 to 100 patients going every week for treatment that's a huge amount so obviously medical tourism is uh, a, a, a huge factor between india and Mauritius, and it still continues in the uh, pandemic and the and, and, and the lockdowns and, and the border closures now um let's talk a bit about agalega before we come back to mauritius uh, agalega is an island uh, which is again part of mauritius uh, population of Agalega is quite small, maybe about a few hundred people. And India, as I'm sure everybody's well aware, is building a, a, a facility there, a naval facility. Uh, if you look at satellite images that have been published in, in the public domain, you will see that uh, India has built an impressively large runway that's capable of holding, of, of, of landing large aircraft, uh, like your Poseidons and so on and so forth. Uh, we've seen construction of hangars and, and other uh, buildings. And there has been some protests uh, by the local Aglegans. There's been some discomfort uh, in Mauritius. A lot of people are saying, look, we don't really want to be pulled uh, into a fight between India and China. We like good relationships with everybody. But both governments, right, the current Jagannath government as well as the opposition, understand that, you know, with all the help that India is giving to Mauritius, uh, there are no free lunches and there is a, a cost involved in terms of of, of, of reciprocity so they have by and large allowed um, uh, the agalega facility to be built and as to when it's going to be commissioned and when the indian navy or the indian air force is going to start operating from this is a question that uh, uh what do you say somebody in the government or somebody in the military would be better capable of answering but yes there has been some angst against Aglega uh, because Mauritius has been scarred by the Diogo Garcia uh, legacy, right, with the U.S. sort of establishing a base there and, and Mauritius's diplomatic spat with the U.K. on ownership of the Chagos Islands. In fact, I remember last year, in the height of the lockdown, the Prime Minister came on TV very excitedly and we were all asking, is he going to lift the lockdown? And He said, uh, I'm very pleased to tell you in the latest map published by the United Nations, they have shown that Chagos is part of Mauritius. So that's a feeling of great pride for us. But Mauritius has also gone to the, to the US and offered a, a, a lease for Diego Garcia. So they understand that Diego Garcia is not something that they're going to get back. So they think, hey, if you can't get it back, we may as well monetize it, right? So, uh, so you have these little uh, geo, tricky geopolitical situations that are still at play in, in the region. Um, well, let's look at uh, the uh, population of Mauritius, right? The, uh, the population of Mauritius is about uh, 1.26 million, so that's close to 1.3 million people, uh, of which 49 to about say 50% are uh, Hindu, another 33% are Christian, about 18 to 17, 17 and a half percent are Muslim, and the rest are Buddhist and Rashtrafarian and, and, and a religious, and so on and so forth. Of this, about 60 to 70 percent of the island's population are of Indian origin. They have their, they can trace their roots back to Tamil Nadu or Bihar or or, or Maharashtra or, or Andhra Pradesh. They Mauritians identify as Tamil. They identify as uh, Bhojpuri. They identify as uh, Marathi. They identify as Gujarati. They identify as Telugu. But they say we are Mauritian first and foremost. We are fifth generation, fourth, fifth generation, third, fourth, fifth generation Mauritian. But we are also very proud of our Indian culture. I know of many Mauritians who have their children learning Tamil, reading and writing Tamil. Uh, most Mauritians enjoy Bollywood movies. They speak Hindi very well. Uh, they enjoy watching uh, Indian shows on Netflix and Amazon. 
they enjoy watching the sas bahu shows that come up on star especially the uh, older uh, mauritians uh, you know octogenarians uh, uh, people in their 70s 80s enjoy watching their k uh, serials you know and uh, so there are these close cultural links a lot of mauritians have oci cards they uh, have bank accounts and property in india a lot of mauritians uh, pine for india they pine for mumbai they pine for delhi they pine for their ability to go to india and, and do their shopping uh, on amazon and and um, flipkart and and you know more importantly a lot of mauritians rely heavily on importing from india whether it's textiles or uh, raw materials which they then uh, assemble here and and sell here locally so uh, there are these huge cultural uh, sort of uh, connections that exist between uh, mauritians and indians because ultimately 60 i would say anywhere between 60 to 70 percent are of indian origin ultimately um there is a lot of uh, mandir diplomacy there's a lot of religious diplomacy uh, mauritius as a country is full of uh, full of temples and 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 uh, there, again there are two types of temples the north indian temples which they call mandirs and the south indian temples which they call kovils right um and a lot of these mandirs and a lot of these large temples are financed by the bjp by the rss by a lot of right wing uh, uh, parties and groups in india and they proudly display their uh, who has funded which temple so obviously there's a huge amount of uh, religious sort of mandir temple diplomacy there's a lot of uh, money that comes in from religious groups in india to mauritius and uh, uh, mauritian hindus are particularly pious they're extremely pious in the way they uh, observe navratri and, and, and shivratri ma shivratri uh, taipu samkavadi here is big it's celebrated in a grand way diwali is celebrated in a big way ganesh chaturthi is celebrated in a big way in fact uh, i would say i would uh, you know i would say with um, with a fair amount of certainty that in many cases mauritian hindus are a lot more pious and a lot more devout and zealous about the way they celebrate their festivities than uh, indians back home so there are these strong sort of religious ties uh, cultural ties at play that anchor these two countries uh, mauritians are smart and when we look at the china fact right mauritians are smart they understand uh, chinese debt diplomacy they understand uh, what is happening in the world they understand that a lot of countries that have Uh, uh, allowed china to come in and develop infrastructure and now paying the price in fact china tried to make inroads uh, in mauritius they tried to develop an f f um, free trade zone in ftz uh, which did not materialize and uh, they did uh, build a convention center hoping to convert it into a a large complex with uh, hotels and uh, entertainment and so on and so forth but only the convention center has uh, been constructed to a point where a former minister once said only dogs go there to get married so it's not that china hasn't um, attempted to build in roads is that uh, there has been been a lot of follow through uh, by the chinese but the chinese and mauritian ties are incredibly close uh, there's still a, a small maybe 0.51% of the population are mauritians of chinese origin they are extremely wealthy extremely extremely wealthy extremely influential uh in government as well as in civil society so there is this strong sort of chinese mauritian uh, connections that cannot be ignored but a mauritius remains a very important partner for india uh, and if you and the best way to talk about how important mauritius is to india is to talk about how india has helped in covid which is how we we will end this episode uh india was one of the first countries that actually reached out to mauritius in during the first wave they dev- they delivered large shipments of hydroxychloroquine uh antivirals paracetamol uh they even sent in a medical team to mauritius to help manage the first wave of covid uh after uh, mauritius came out of lockdown and there were no domestic cases uh, india start cases started to rise and then plateau but india continued to help mauritius in providing essential equipment and supplies and when the vaccines uh, started rolling out I mean india started exporting vaccines and this is where there's a slight discrepancy uh, because according to the vaccine maitri site or uh, in the ministry of external affairs india has given 100000 free doses of covid shield and has sold 100000 doses of covid shield and 200000 doses of covaxin but according to the mauritius press the first 200000 doses of covid shield was a grant and the 200000 doses of covaxin was paid for but about 400000 doses of uh, made in india vaccines have come to mauritius in fact i take my second dose of uh, covid shield on tuesday so uh, and a lot of uh, 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 colleagues and co-workers and employees that i know have taken the covaxin uh, vaccine covaxin is an incredibly popular vaccine 
and uh, the first 100000 doses ran out in a week so uh, um india mauritius is really hoping and and, pi- and waiting for the indian vaccines to to start being exported again because mauritius is a goal of uh, vaccinating about 70% of the population which is about 800000 uh, people two doses so that they can open up their borders to tourism uh, which they haven't done in a year so everybody is asking me when is india going to sort its situation out when is india going to vaccinate we need the vaccine who else is going to supply us covax has submitted as a spread about 50, only 52000 doses sinopharm has only supplied about 100000 doses and again the chinese vaccines are not seen as reliable because of their limited efficacy so um uh, mauritius is eagerly waiting for india to uh, ride out the second wave and start vaccinating its people and then start exporting vaccines again so that they can start benefiting and they are also cognizant of the fact that they have signed a deal for 1.2 million doses of sputnik but they understand that ultimately the sputnik is going to be manufactured in india so they are really hoping that uh, for them to even get these sputnik vi- vaccines in india gets its act together and does so quickly so ultimately mauritius and india have a very close relationship it would take the chinese a huge amount of investment and uh, uh, more importantly uh, uh, a lot of more effort and diplomatic sort of uh, outreach to sort of rest mauritius away from india and the average mauritian is smart he's savvy he she is savvy the the average mauritian understands that uh, um what they are getting into when they receive aid or when they receive grants and they trust india as a country because you know the india ultimately is a a good samaritan a good international samaritan that looks to help its uh, allies first and foremost and on that note we will uh, sort of come to an end to this episode i hope it was informative uh, thank you so much for uh, letting me speak with you today have a good day that was a very comprehensive and detailed overview of the islands of Mauritius and Aglaga. Mr. Tanvir has brought us interesting perspectives from his first-hand experience working and living in Mauritius. We hope you found this episode insightful. Please join our next episode in the Island Diplomacy series where we will cover the island of Maldives. Thank you for joining us. Jai Hind.